find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the poor. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show back again. Mike Sorge, Sorgatron here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Video editor, uh, production guy for some local groups here in Pittsburgh. And of course, my uh, compatriot on this show, Eamon, down in Corpus Christi, Texas. Of course, he's the announcer with the great Inspire Pro Wrestling down there. How are you doing tonight, Eamon? I am doing fantastic, Sorg. How are you? Awesome. I'm excited to uh, talk about some indie wrestling with our great guest tonight, Facade. We'll get that in a moment. But in the meantime, uh, first, a uh, big shout out. Thanks a lot to our uh, friend Basic Sickness for the intro song to uh, the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, check them out for some free music, videos, all kinds of stuff over at basicsickness.com. And you can also uh, check us out, all the wrestler shows we do. Of course, uh, we also do the Wrestling Mayhem show and, of course, the wrap-ups for TNA, WWE, stuff like that and other uh, great articles and everything uh, at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. And you can check out this show, the Indie Mayhem show, on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and iHeartRadio in video and audio format. So please like, subscribe, comment, favorite, whatever the mechanism in there is there. And please share it with your friends uh, that you think should be exposed to indie wrestling or you know we're down with indie wrestling as well. Um, and of course you can check us out. Uh, drop us an email at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com or the hotline at 412-206-WMS0 and uh, online at Mayhem Show on Twitter facebook google plus on wrestling mayhem show and we're of course here usually every tuesday night 11 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com and you guys can join us in the chat room as well so this week amen i'm really excited this is an old friend of the show that's joining us i know i think you've been on before talking to him as well absolutely i'm, uh, I'm, I'm pumped to have him back uh, it's been a long time coming got a lot of good stuff uh, i hear going for him so awesome and uh this guy I, i've known this guy for a while uh, facade is with us formerly the bomber formerly other names but he's just <laughs> plain facade i've had to make the transition myself how you doing tonight yo how are you yeah long time michael Ever since the days of you having long hair. You have a long hair. <laughs> I think I knew you before you were a wrestler, didn't I? Like you all had all the old Juggalo stuff, right? You knew, you knew me pre-Dreadlocks, which is maybe a handful of people outside of my family currently that I'm still friends with in my life. Even though that's like a good like 11 years, man. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, but you come a long way, uh, and I want to get into a little bit of that. But again, let's go back a little bit. We like to kind of try to figure out what the roots of, like, you know, everybody talks about the training and everything in these interviews. Uh, but we like to kind of go back and say, like, what got you into wrestling? Like, why are you, what made you so big of a wrestling fan that you decided to go uh, the distance with what you're doing today? What's your, what's your earliest kind of memory of that? Man, it's uh, my earliest memory of wrestling first is uh, – Back in the day, I remember watching Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan, title for title, mm -hmm. and Hogan lost the belt, and I, I swear that I cried because I was <laughs> maybe five, six years old, something like that. So that's definitely the first memory I can think of. And just like I was, I was a Hulkamaniac, and I mean, I still am. And that's just the kind of thing that, like, that, that, that stuck with me. That and watching wrestling with my dad. Um, my dad passed away when I was seven, actually. And um, so watching wrestling was kind of always like one of those things that kind of, I guess you could say, helped help keep me close to him. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of what inspires me, you know, to do what I do today. Uh, you know, last year I was um, lucky enough to win Super Indy. And uh, I actually dedicated that tournament to my dad because of, you know, He's the reason why I'm wrestling, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, it was great to be there that night to, to, to experience that, uh, of course, on our end of production as well. Uh, oh, speaking of which, let's let's talk about that. I mean, you're a guy that, that came up through uh, uh, the, the, the IWC training school. The, the I, I keep forgetting the entire full name of that. The Steel City Wrestling Academy, right? 
right. Uh, actually, Steel City Wrestling Academy is the now um, is the 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 current um, oh, that's right. group of trainers and school and everything. Um, but as of right now, it is uh, or rather back then, it was the IWC Coalition of Competition. That's right. I forgot that, about that. Yeah, they created the likes of Vendetta, Jason Gorey, Marshall Gambino, uh, Mickey Gambino, uh, Delicious, Juicy J, Jimmy DeMarco, uh, <laughs> Chess Flexer, you know, um, you know quite, quite, a, quite a list of guys, you know, Zeno Ion. Um, but uh, those trainers, that being Shirley Doe, Super Hentai, and Glenn Spector, those, it seemed that that was uh, a different time period. A lot of different things were happening. It was the first time. IWC had ever had a school, and um, you know there's there's a lot of different uh, other trainers, guys from the area that would come in that would help out, and it was it was it was quite an experience, especially you know like outside of that there was seminars happening all the time, and you know uh, being as well traveled as uh, Shirley Doe, Glenn Spector, and Super Hentai are, it was they they bestowed a wealth of knowledge on all us guys. And that was a heck of a time. I, I know we've talked to plenty of those names you mentioned there and others uh, from kind of that area, era of, of, uh, of the training school. Um, and it's produced a lot of talent. I, of course, you know, Zima Ayana, DJ, uh, uh, DJ Z up on, on TNA. Uh, I think Logan Chulo is from that area era too as well, right? Yeah, he um, actually started with, uh, with us. Um, but he, him and uh, like Aiden Vale... Um, ben Kingsley were in a smaller transitional period where um, we went from the school on Mifflin Road, and uh, then I finished up my training. Um, we would take the the ring from up at the Court Time uh, Sports Center. We'd break it down and put it up every single Friday night, and we had about like two and a half, three hours to do it. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of where my training started uh, to finish up and. Like Aiden, Logan, and uh, Kingsley, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else, anyone else that used to come out. Maybe Pump Ferrari also. They, that was uh, that time, time period where it was more along the lines of just Shirley Doe. That is the second time I've heard Pump Ferrari in as many weeks online. Yeah. And uh, I'm yeah. so, as one of my favorite, still one of my favorite names in pro wrestling along with Chess Flexor. I, I had seen it too. I'm just uh, working on that trending worldwide for Homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, uh, you know, one of the cool things, like I noticed, uh, you're one of the guys that gets marketing. I feel uh, you, you, you're something different, bright. You got marketing? the dread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, marketing. <laughs> marketing. <laughs> I'm just auto tron behind me, and uh, just happens to say, you know. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, you got a brand, and this is the day and age where we got guys like Colt Cabana that are creating their own thing with podcasts and everything. Um, and it's always been, at least for the past, you know, say, you know, twenty or so years in pro wrestling about the merch, um, and, uh, and especially for you, indie guys. I mean, that's 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 a lot of the uh, you know money getting around uh, for you. But you seem to take it to a whole different level. I mean. You, you, We've seen, I've seen on Instagram. We've talked about this before. How uh, you got bandanas and you're putting your tag on it. You're, you're, there's, you have shorts. You have like you have a whole wardrobe typically at your merch booth. Yeah. Um, luckily, uh, well, I, I, sometimes there was a time period that I really um, needed money, and that's when I decided to start making the bandanas because I was trying to think, you know, little things. You know, masks are very popular. People were always buying little trinkets. People were always buying T-shirts. So I tried to, you know, step the game up and try to do things that I actually was interested in. Like, you know, all, all the people used to tell me to I should start printing on neon shirts, and I was a little, a little worried about that because I didn't want to kind of saturate that and water down like what I thought was cool kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then I realized that that's actually what people like. That's what people want to wear. So like. Now I have different color neon. I got spicy salmon, which is like a pink. I got a, a green, a yellow, all these different uh, tank tops, different color shorts, you know, any, any kind of print bandana under the sun. Um, and really, I feel that is like uh, we don't get paid enough just wrestling, you know. I mean, yeah. it's no secret to anyone yeah. out there that the, the indie guys really do what they can. And I'm lucky enough that I feel like I, I have the possibility to appeal 
to enough people on another uh, on enough levels that you know people would be interested in you know uh, possibly helping me out buying my merch and supporting me and you know it, it it's smart to have you know I got five dollars ten dollars fifteen dollars twenty twenty five you got to have a, it's there's a lot that goes into it I try to really look at it as a business and you know I feel like it benefits me but traveling with me on the other hand is a little ridiculous because uh, I do have a you know a giant ass bin of um, merchandise. That, you know, my it, it's still not as bad as Dabrowski and his uh, in, insane Dealorama wrestling toys suitcase he brings. Yes, Joe Dabrowski loves his uh, his trinkets and uh, knickknacks, and you know he, he doesn't do too bad. But and he always makes the joke that he loves to uh, try to get the table next to me because of. Uh, <laughs> All the all the kids and all the the, the um, overflow. Oh jeez! But uh, you know, I really didn't think that I was doing so good with the merch until just recently. I was on a couple shows with uh, Mason Ryan, who was recently released mm-hmm. down at APWA and then uh, Pro Wrestling Syndicate, and he's and he, he's a fellow from Wales. He said, "Man, you really you really sell a lot of merchandise." And I'm like, "Yeah, thanks, man." Uh, because he was there getting, people were taking uh, eight by ten pictures of him, and uh, you know, then there was a line for me, and that was every day that he saw me, and he really made a point. He's like, "You've got, you've got it down, brother. You've got it in every color. You've, you've got, you've got that appeal. I like what you're doing." And I'm like, "Well, thanks, man." I never really thought that it was like that big of a deal, but I mean, luckily, <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh, you need to pay the bills. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, and that's so funny because one of the things I often say when you know this, this comes up a lot about like you know, we always talk about like sometimes we sit over there and you, you got that and we're like looking at all this stuff and I'm like you know that's the guy that I remember. And I think Eamon was with me at this this, this point. Uh, the one resolution when they had Kevin Nash in. I think it's the first time they were doing something with, with Justin Lavar and everything up there. And we remember we looked down. We're sitting up in the stands and we're like, man, Facade's got a bigger line than Nash does right now. And it was through most of it was through most of intermission there, uh, and that was kind of like the first like it's it's Kevin freaking Nash like this is this is Diesel right this is the NWO guy and uh, and you you had all the ki- of course you had all the kids in your line of course but uh, but it was an interesting comparison to see what you're doing was uh, uh, working there. Um, yeah, I mean like I I think about stuff like that because that was kind of the case with uh, Mason and like I don't really like to you know. Put that out there, but I mean, like, I, it's really appreciated uh, uh, appreciated by me to actually, you know, see things like that, like that really, um, that I I have an effect on people that really, really that they would care more about me than you know, go to see somebody who's actually done a lot of cool things, you know. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Now, of course, we mentioned before, and I'm, I'm sidetracked from it, but uh, uh, you're. Just participated in Super Indie of Super Indie 13. Of course, you went uh, the distance last year with Super Indie, as we mentioned before, um, and, and definitely had a, a pretty big involvement going all the way again to the main event uh, of this one, uh, three matches in. Uh, what was it like? What is Super Indie like uh, at this point? So, like, I feel like, uh, you know, IWC has definitely made a transition, and, and Super Indie always like seemed like the the weather of how the IWC in particular was doing and, and always interesting with the talent that comes in. Yeah, this year was definitely, uh, you know, a lot of the, the past with a little bit of the new mm-hmm. or you know, a little bit of everything, you know, how I had Saban, uh, PD, myself, RJ city. Um, they have some, some of the newer guys, like I said, RJ city, Sammy Guevara, mm-hmm. uh, Lewis. Clinton, and, um, you know, they. I feel like IWC Super Indie. That's where IWC really shines because that's where you get to see some of the best from all over the country and even the world. You know, um, compete in one awesome tournament. And you know, this year, I I, I hope that I had put my best efforts forward. But uh, RJ RJ City just smirks that title, bro. Mm-hmm. Of course, mm-hmm. calling it the Sports Entertainment uh, Championship. Uh, as, as part of what's going on there, um, I have to address because this surprised me when we got there. You got you got kind of a John Cena reaction going out there. I noticed a little bit of booze in the crowd, a little bit different going on there. I don't know. Uh, was, was it just a group of people, or I know you addressed them? 
Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Uh, when it comes to the crowd um, attendance and things like that, there's a particular group of uh, people that were um, palace lovers, which is uh, they go way back. Um, if you remember, myself and Palace had a battle at Mountain State Madness. Mm. And there were some kids that grew up with him, and they were really, really not wanting me to win, obviously, because <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, that transcend to the next show they ever go to in their life would be this one. And they know to hate me because I was going up against their boy. Mm -hmm. So at any chance, if it, there was something either non-palace related or, you know, in any in other case, me, then uh, they definitely were proceeding to, to hate with all their might. Yeah. That is until... Me and Palace hugged at the end. It seemed like they were a little bit more receptive to that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Everybody made up. That's good. Um, I, yeah, I can remember those the first days when we went to IWC. I remember giving Denny Gregory a lot of hell with our group. So, And you know what? I, I, I welcome it because, you know, my job, I'm not trying to go out there and make everybody love me. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to love me, um, that's cool. I, I appreciate the love. But if you want to prove me, I mean, I'm still winning because I'm still making you react. That's what I'm there to do. And, you know, if you want to boot me, I'm I'm more than welcome to, to to accept that, you know, because love me or hate me, that's what you're there to do. You're there to just forget about all the BS and everything that's going on in your life. And, you know, if <laughs> you want to hate on the neon ninja, that's cool with me. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and now you mentioned Chris Saban here uh, with uh, uh, Super Indy. And I know I've been seeing a lot of the cars that you've been popping up on, you know, uh, all around the area and, and, and out definitely a lot outside the area. You're definitely one of the more travel guys that I follow out there. Um, but uh, you, you've had a lot of big names uh, kind of pop up on, on the other, other end of that card. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I've been really lucky. I mean, that's like... I, I can't be thankful enough of how the cards fall into my hands sometimes because, I mean, in the span of maybe eight or nine days, I had like three three multi multi man matches and three matches with Chris Saban one on one, and you know some of the multi man matches I've been having are, are not just you know run of the mill ones. You have guys like Sean Jake Dutt, um, Shinron, who's an up and comer. We were over in Pro Wrestling Syndicate. There was a six-man suicidal tag match or suicidal six-way for the suicidal title. Um, I mean, that was a that was a crazy show. Just like last week, uh, Super Indy, Saban in the second round, were away, and then RJ City and like I said, Sammy Guevara on the, uh, the third. And then just this past week, Remix Pro um, wrestled Chris Saban at Freedom Fest. And that was really cool because it was an outside show, and uh, we were in the last match, and it actually got dark um, as the match proceeded, and the dew started coming down on the ground, and uh, made for quite a slippery time. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, Saturday and Sunday, I accidentally got to wrestle Chris Saban again on Sunday due to Jason St. getting injured down at NWA Smoky Mountain. So, I mean. For a guy that's you know hot off, hot off TV like that, and mm -hmm. for me to get a lucky break to really uh you know try my wares against him was very lucky too. Mm -hmm. And that's not to forget. Uh, just showed the little clip there. Um, AJ Styles. I had a match with AJ Styles at Remix Pro at the last Throwdown event, and um, you know that that that's another thing. I mean, he's a he's a world champion right now. Um, IWGP title. Um, and he's over in Japan killing it right now. And I, I just got lucky enough to wrestle him in between while he was here, here in the U.S. So, I mean, I'm just super thankful that all this crazy stuff is, is kind of falling in my hands. Nice, nice. And it's interesting seeing you uh, again, you know, kind of hooked up in matches with uh, somebody like Sabu, which with a lot of your rope work, you really kind of remind me of uh, kind of, you know, the Sabu style. It turned up a notch, of course. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I, another lucky break. I, on my birthday in December, I wrestled Sabu um, at the ECW Arena for Extreme Rising. And um, a lot of people say that was one of my best matches and one of Sabu's best matches that he's had in quite some time. And I, I, I take that very personally because, you know, I, I look up a lot to Sabu and, 
I've been lucky enough to have a couple matches with him already before this, and I feel like you know this one just being the 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 last one that really just put everything over the top, and then to get such a good reaction at the ECW arena, you know, that's that's just something. You know, I think everybody who's even been a fan of ECW or even wrestling in general can really appreciate. Nice, nice. Uh, He's actually going to be coming in for POW um, coming in here in September, and uh, you know who knows might actually get to see Sabu and Sabu in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I saw that. It's going to be a big ECW night with uh, Sabu and Balls Mahoney. I think I saw listed right. Yeah, Sabu and Balls Mahoney. Um, that's me uh, at the Ice Line in Connellsville. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just Outcast Wrestling. They're doing some, some stuff here in Pittsburgh too. I know uh, Sorgatron Media just. Their uh, digital downloads. Yes, and uh, you know that's you know another step too. They're looking to try to get IP reviews, and uh, you know you can see some some crazy stuff over there. Myself and Shane Strickland had uh, one hell of a feud, and um, you know we even had a match. It was a twenty minute time limit, and then it went like at least five more minutes, and that was definitely one of the best matches I've had this year so far. Back in uh, February. Certainly. Awesome. Uh, Eamon, do you have any questions here? Uh, I was curious. I, I mean, we mentioned all the talents uh, you've recently uh, sort of competed against. Uh, is there anyone uh, either, you know, sort of locally or even beyond that uh, uh, that sticks out to you as somebody you want to face next? Um, you know, I had the opportunity to work with uh, in a fray match with the Young Bucks and a few other people. Mm-hmm. Last year's WrestleCon, sort of, I bet you remember that. Um, but I really like to see a match with myself and Glory against the Young Bucks because that, that's another couple of dudes that are just absolutely killing it right now. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, you know, personally, singles wise, um, I, I definitely would like to see another rematch with myself and AJ because I feel like I feel like there's so much more to be had with that. But um, it's it's uh, it's hard to say. I think um, maybe me and Callisto from uh, NXT, you know, mm-hmm. we've worked together a bit on the Indies, but we never really had any kind of uh, you know, singles match. It was always a uh, multi-man matches, three ways, and um, I feel like we always worked well together. And I'd like to see some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, any of those I think would be really killer. Awesome. Uh, and uh, one big question we ask is, it, you know, it's ups and downs, all, all kinds of crazy stuff happens on indie wrestling. Uh, you know, we've talked about it. We mentioned before before the show here about the crazy stuff that happened on Extreme Rising, uh, uh, you know, uh, in that situation. Uh, what are uh, the best thing, what is the best thing, and what is the worst thing about indie wrestling so far in your career? The best thing about indie wrestling... A lot of people would actually say it's the worst thing about any wrestling is the fans. Um, the fan support and the, the intimacy, the level of uh, intimacy the fans can get and that can draw them in that much more to make them you know, love the wrestlers that much more than they would in say, uh, terms that they would somebody was WWE where you know, people come to an IWC show or they come to any indie show, they can actually really feel like they have the power that they are able to do anything they can to help you win the match or they feel like they're involved. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that could also become a little bit too, too, uh, too much that as where you start losing the mystique of the wrestler when they're lar- as large of a life as they were. But uh, the worst thing about indie wrestling is something, I mean, I'm, it's one of those things that people just do, which you know, you just say it's any wrestling, what do you expect? Is the amount of moves that people do and just absolutely ruin. I mean, you see a lot of matches that are just crazy spot fests and people are just go selling and drop each other on their head. And uh, really, that's one of those things that really takes away from a thought. Yeah. Mm. You know, it is what it is. And 
I can't change it. I fall I fall victim to it. I try to, you know, play my part, but it's just something that runs rampant. It, it just, I, yeah, I don't know how you could deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you definitely got it could be, uh, uh, I've, I've heard, even heard as one of the flippy guys. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of a, a hard thing to uh, get, get kind of stuck with. But that's, that's, that's an aspect oh. of indie wrestling now, right? That? Flippy guys, flippy guys, flippy guys. I mean, I keep the, I get lumped in with the flippy guys because I mean I do flips and that, that, that primary method of attack is fly high flying. So, uh, but the thing about it is, I feel like it, there's something you learn as you go along. There's uh, a time and a place when you kick it up and the flippiness or you know the acrobatics come into play as where you know things nowadays people who are just doing gymnastics where they're just they're just coming out flipping flipping rolling flipping flipping non-stop and then whenever they actually do a flip or any kind of you know acrobatic move that it, it doesn't get the real reaction that it should mm-hmm. i mean it's, it's certainly um uh, uh and i think there's an expectation i think it was maybe maybe that's this is the generation um, cause I know, you know, I've heard things like, you know, somebody go into uh, a seminar, uh, with, with, with somebody who is, you know, again, could be considered kind of a, a guy that does high risk moves like that and, you know, wanted to learn a cool move and not so much the ring psychology. That just, that just is beyond me. Yeah. People want to go into wrestling just and try to learn a cool move. Whenever the the cool move is not what's going to get you over, not not what's going to get you paid, what get you signed, or anything like that. Yeah. It's psychology. It's knowing how to to manipulate a crowd to get a reaction, so they they love you or hate you. It's not if you do a cool move, that's going to be. It's like fireworks. You're like, oh, that was cool. Okay. You have to. It's it's timing and placement, and you know, I, I, I this is only what I think. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I don't think I know everything, or I'm like. You know, some kind of smart guy. This is just what, what I, I the knowledge I picked up doing seminars, doing clinics, stuff like that. What I've been trained coming up. I mean, but it's it, that's that's what's wrong with a lot of. Somebody said a lot too many kids buying boots and not enough people buying tickets. And you know that really uh, it says a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly, it's definitely a different different time out there. Awesome. Uh, anything coming up uh, you want to mention or anything before you uh, get out of here? Um, yeah, there's a couple of shows coming up. There's uh, APWA in Shinston this Friday and Saturday. I'll be talking about the uh, Super Junior title there. Um, next week being uh, July the 5th, fourth. Um, I think I'm going to take the, the weekend off and enjoy the nice uh, Independence Day. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, I have a fair show on the 4th of July, so... That should be interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But anyway, um, then uh, July the 11th, um, catch BOW out in uh, the Connellsville Ice Line. I will be in a penalty box match, which is uh, <laughs> as old school and ridiculous as they come. Yeah, this, yeah, uh, I got to mention that. I, I, think I, I, I might have talked about this on the show before. But VOW, um, and we're going to be, uh, we're actually going to have one of the promoters on the show very soon, and I'm going to ask him the same question. They always have the most interesting stipulations. You know, it, 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 they love their gimmicks. They love their gimmicks. Three way casket <laughs> matches, this thing. I think, isn't, isn't it going to be like the Assyrian portal in a mask versus uh, Generation, right. uh, you know, Salem with Generation Dead? clothing or something like that like like the, yeah. the stipulations take like two long lines like longer than like two tag teams with valets getting listed on the flyer it, it's it's pretty amazing over there it's crazy they have something like uh the uh, apocalypse lattice like it's gonna have nails and staples in the what? the lattice surrounding the ring like gardening lattice which is <laughs> ridiculous in itself i don't know how, wait 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 wait. is that this contraption that i've been seeing all over the place look at that <laughs> what is this? 
money going. I love, you know, at a certain point, and I, and I know they're bringing something different, you know, uh, that, that's definitely not in the area, you know, definitely appealing to the ECW crowd and that kind of thing. Um, um, but I do enjoy when somebody wants to do a spectacle like this, and, and I can't wait to see how it turns out. Because I, I mean, all we have is, is I've never, when's the last time you've seen a match with an artist rendering like this before? <laughs> it's 3D, man. It's like they sold that to people, and they're like, this is what we're having. We need a 3D computer-generated image of it. Can you do it? <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yes, we can. All right. And, of course, uh, you're all, you are all over the social medias. I know I get Snapchat, Snapchats from you all the time. And because of Snapchat, <laughs> I'm typically very worried about what I'm going to see. Uh, but you're all over the place. Uh, list them off. Where, where are you at online? Uh, you can find me Instagram, Twitter, Facebook.com slash one facade, F-A-C-A-D-E, and uh, putting all kinds of silly pictures and um, the like up there for all you guys to giggle at. Um, if I send you a Snapchat, you will appreciate it, and <laughs> I promise it will be at least PG-13, um, adult supervision suggested, but... There's nothing to worry about. You can look at them at work, and I don't send poop <laughs> pictures like some other people that I know that are awesome, but I tell them <laughs> to remain nameless. Um, other than that, you know, um, find me on YouTube, One Facade Underground. I try to put matches and cool things like that, highlight videos. Whenever uh, I decide to talk and put a promo up, that sometimes makes it up there, too, if I'm not an idiot. But, uh, yeah, trying to t take over the world, spread the word of uh, the facade merch, and um, hopefully every little kid across the country will have a neon shirt and they can say, hey, everybody, look, I'm, I'm just doing so good. Everybody wants to <laughs> 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 Awesome, awesome. He's all over the place, all over the social medias. I wouldn't be surprised if you start a podcast sooner or later. Jump on that. I cool. mean, I kind of I want to. Like, I have the time, but... I don't have the, I mean, I got so much stuff I'm always, like, worried about anyway. Like, I'm trying to get, I'm, you know what? I'm trying to get a sponsorship. I'm trying to get a clothing sponsorship. There you go. That's what I'm trying to do. This company here, Hustle Harder, Flag Nor Fail, people might have heard of them. They do the kind of thing that I do whenever I do my merch. And I try to, I try to kind of print stuff by hand, like I said, and that's kind of what they do. And they're a bodybuilding company, and I feel like it's weird because I've done it for years. So, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll be a sponsored wrestler next time you see me. I'll have uh, some sweet screen-printed custom gear from a clothing company. And uh, just try to market everything, like I said. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Facade brought to you by, insert name here, joining us next time in 100 episodes on Indie Ram Show, I'm sure. <laughs> brought to you here by Sorgatron Media, the Neon Ninja, the Aerosol Seth, the Aerial Arsonist. Man, man of many names. Thanks a lot, Facade. I uh, can't wait to have you on again, see what other adventures you get into. And uh, with that, uh, Eamon, we're going to talk a little bit about something going on here in Pittsburgh. Wall Street Journal. Yes, Eamon, we're talking about the Wall Street Journal here on the show. Look at us. What? Big, 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 big uh, here's video uh, shown right now if you're on the video version, but of course you can look up KSWA Wall Street Journal. You're going to find the article right there. This is actually a Fed. Uh, Lord Zoltan, a legend here in, in Pittsburgh. He's a uh, you know old studio wrestling fame uh, that I'm aware of. Um, but this is like one of those. It's one of those groups. Amen. <laughs> um, but no, it's like it's it's a smaller group that is the only group that consistently runs here in Pittsburgh. Um, and rabid crowd it's the fans that are into it you know much like i love about rwa um and they got featured including friend of the show keith hot is actually featured in this piece as well um uh, that, later yes. in this video uh but really awesome uh, i mean it, it was very much in the context of it was very much in the context of um yeah here's a bunch of guys that you know hope to get in wwe but you know or don't or don't care but they're doing wrestling here's a shot of keith hot here Actually, and he actually goes by the Jester character we talked about when we interviewed him a, a, a little bit back. Um, but it, it's so interesting to be like, here's indie wrestling at its core. Yeah, uh, I, think it does, it, I think it does a really good job of showing in, in the basic 
sort of means showcasing like this is what indie wrestling is this yeah is, yeah you know, it's like this guy jack massacre this guy jack massacre installs network systems this guy uh you know it, it revealed Lori zoltan as as a uh uh allegheny county uh clerk or something i think uh mm-hmm. you know it's like this is the guy's age job i didn't realize keith Hodge just recently graduated from college you know congratulations to him by the way i wasn't aware of that uh Big so to keith Hodge. Yes, big ups to the Keith Hot, hot Miss. Uh, he was actually just at Super Indie with uh, Colin Delaney again. Um, but no, it, what a great piece. And this seems to be happening more and more. You're getting wrestling featured. Uh, you know, we just here in Pittsburgh, we had Cesaro all over TV uh, and radio uh, for WWE coming to town. And great things, of course, with the Connor, the Connor the Crushers thing uh, turn, uh, spinning into mm-hmm. actually a, uh, uh, a memorial uh, donation for. Uh, the local children's hospital, um, and just more and more of this indie stuff. You know, it gets featured all the time up in Erie, and I don't know if you can find anything down your way, um, but it, it just, just, it's becoming more of a common thing to say, "Hey, this indies, are, these indies are out there," and maybe Ring of Honor does something about that because uh, they're on TV and are like, "Oh, hey, there's something other than WWE," you know. Um, and again, such a such a great piece coming from a financial newspaper like the Wall Street Journal like this is really, right. really kind of shocking. Yeah, definitely. It's I mean, it's always surprising to see like I, cause I feel like wrestling in general, not just indie wrestling, you get sort of like, you know, you get the diehard wrestling fans and they feel sort of this. Uh, they're, they're not a part of, I guess what you could consider normal society, I guess you could say, where you people who don't know anything about wrestling just see it as something weird and different. Um, but it's cool to see things like the Wall Street Journal of all places, like, you know, really dive into it and look at it closely and, and, and sort of get an, an understanding of it. And, and it's really cool to see. Yeah, certainly, certainly. So, I mean, a really cool thing. Again, we don't talk about KSW that much because, no, they're not doing video. They're not doing anything where if you're not in Pittsburgh, you're not going to see it, you know. And, and but this is still indie wrestling. Like, this yeah, is, yeah, but this still counts. Is, this still counts. Yeah. But, I mean, you, well, you know, on this show, I, 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 at least ones that we talk at length about, well, here you are. You actually are, actually are able to see it, finally, KSW, <laughs> so we can <laughs> talk about it. Uh, but, I mean, that's been one of the qualifiers because we, we, there's no reason for us to talk about, hey, here's the indie da 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 that you went to, you know, uh, you know, you can say with PWR because they don't, they don't do video of it. They're filming, but they don't sell DVDs or anything that I'm aware of, you know, so there's nothing yeah. that, you know, Amy, you can check out of PWR or KS, KSWA other than these couple of things we mentioned. Uh, um, mm-hmm. you know, just to qualify that that's why if you're like why aren't you talking about such and such it's in your back card because uh, nobody else can and doesn't do anybody any good and if uh, if guys are listening in Texas they're not coming to your show guys uh, it doesn't help anybody mm-hmm. uh, but you know but uh, you know somebody like Facade you can go on uh, uh, YouTube and check them out you know you can you can buy the indie DVDs that he's on the cover of all over the place. Some of them at sorgatronmedia.com slash store, by the way. Uh, plug, plug, plug. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, it, it's really cool to see this uh, kind of represented. Um, Eamon, you know, and something else really cool, we talked, again, another friend of the show back on Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talked a couple times to Mike Kingston mm-hmm. uh, of mm-hmm. Headlock, the comic book, another another fashion where indie uh, wrestling in general and i'm including him here on this show because i think it is kind of an indie he's an indie comic book guy um and this is kind of a quick news i was hoping i could get a chance to read it today uh but the first issue of he they had a kickstarter a, a little bit back uh to fund his book and of course this is a book that's been um, had involvement covers previously, I think again by Jerry Lawler, uh, Christopher Daniels. I think it was what was part of uh, maybe contributing stories uh, for for this new edition. Um, now me, I I'm, I'm just in the digital stuff. I don't need a book on the shelf, so I, I just I just kicked in for the uh, digital version. I got my first one today. Downloaded it, put it in Google Play Books, so I can I can pull up a device and read it when I get a moment. Um, but it's really cool that it is coming to fruition. It did get launched today. I think it's, it's probably a four issue series, and I think they got some other extra stuff uh, uh, going on there. Uh, if it's not already, then I don't know why this video isn't playing. Um, there it is. They, they had a cool uh, kind of motion comic uh trailer going on there but you can check out more about it at headlockcomic.com and uh check in for the latest news uh to see when that issue finally does uh get released to the public because i know we get early access on the kickstarter but uh some really cool update uh from a friend of the show uh so uh, what else what do you got lined up there Eamon? 
There is some indie events I want to talk about that uh, will be happening this weekend that I think you should definitely check out. Uh, the first one is is sort of a self-promotion, not, not really, but I definitely want to bring it up because uh, it goes back to some of the stuff we mentioned before on the Indie Mayhem show. Uh, there's an event this weekend in Belton, Texas for NWA 360. Uh, at the Bell Expo Center, or at the Bell County Expo Center, excuse me, uh, this weekend, uh, this fr- uh, Friday, uh, big big show for them. Uh, big show for us at Inspire Pro as well, because there's actually going to be an Inspire Pro Championship defense on that show. Oh, nice! Uh, which should be really really cool. Uh, Mike Dell is defending against Andy Dalton and Rudy Russo in a three way match, and I think it sort of goes back to sort of what we tried to discuss uh, before on the show about how we Inspire Pro join the National Wrestling Alliance and how that benefit of community and uh, being able to work together with other companies uh, is sort of being put on display in this show because, you know, we, we're having an Inspire Pro Championship defense. And, and I think that'll be really cool stuff. I'm excited to work with the guys at NWA 360. I sadly won't be able to be at the event because I'm about five hours away from it. Um, but uh, I definitely encourage you to support them. Uh, Facebook.com says NWA 360. Besides the Inspire Pro Championship match, there's going to be a dog collar match between uh, Scott Summers and Brett McKenzie for the NWA 360 Championship, which should be really awesome. Uh, Barbie Hayden's defending the NWA World Women's Championship against Miss Dyslexia. Uh, Carson, who is a breakout star around Texas. Uh, Lance Hoyt is going to be there. Uh, Charlie Haas is going to be there. There's a lot of really good stuff going down uh, for NWA 360. And they're one of the breakout companies for the NWA. They're, they're, they're not competing, I guess, in sort of like one of the bigger Texas areas, but they are putting out some really good stuff consistently. Um, so I encourage you to go support them. That's Facebook.com. They have a billboard. They have a billboard. They do. They're getting around. They're, nice. they're, they're doing some really cool stuff. Nice. Nice. They're Excellent. doing some really awesome stuff there. Uh, the, the guys that uh, promote that show are really, really cool. I can't speak to them before. And, and they're awesome guys. And it, like I said, it goes back to the partnership with the NWA, mm-hmm. the ability to work together. And, and what, what is so rare in, in independent wrestling is awesome. And, and this is a good moment for us. Uh, quick plug, though, also for Inspire Pro. We just made the big announcement today, this afternoon, about the one of our big main event matches for our next show, uh, July 27th. No turning back. It's another one of our XX division events that will showcase our women's division. Uh, and the main event is an NWA World Women's Championship defense when Barbie Hayden defends against uh, world traveled uh, star, uh, Shimmer Star, Shine Wrestling Tag Team Champion Mia Yim. Oh. Uh, and that is going to be a killer match. We've seen, Barbie her. Hayden, We've seen her up here in uh, IWC, I know. So, absolutely. She's really done you know, multiple tours in Japan. She's an amazing professional you know, wrestler. And, and, and going into it, and I don't know if it's something I've seen with her before. I'm like, oh, this is some model chick that thinks she can wrestle kind of bullshit, right? Uh, but no, she was for real. You know, it was actually, absolutely. you know, I, I think unfortunately the first, first time I saw her, she was just a ballet, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I got to see a match. She's done like, some stuff in Ring of Honor as well. Yeah, like oh, yeah. And stuff oh, yeah. like that, so. But yes, yeah, this will be the first time ever Barbie Hayden versus Mia Yim, and that is going to be absolutely killer. I encourage you uh, to go check that out, and then we'll have more information on that event coming soon. We also have a lot. We're announcing a bunch of names for that show still to come. Uh, we've already announced Leva Bates, uh, Solo Darling, uh, uh, and we're we're piling out some more names hopefully soon. So there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff happening July 27th. Uh, and the last event I do want to mention that's going to be happening this weekend that I encourage you to check out. Uh, is for wrestling is fun. They are still doing some stuff, uh, even with the uh, uh, whole uh, resurgence of Chikara. Uh, there's definitely still some wrestling is uh, influence throughout. Uh, interesting stuff going on with Chikara as well. Uh, they're here they've been doing some really cool stuff. Um, so, but their wrestling is fun is having an event in Reading, PA this weekend, June 28th, for Banana Star Galactica, uh, which is should be a very interesting event. There's a lot of really good talented guys uh, on that show. Uh, definitely a lineup of guys that you see throughout Chikara, throughout Wrestling Is. Uh, and there's some really cool names. So I encourage you, if you're in the Reading, PA area, to go check them out and go support them. Now, and if you can't, or go ahead, sir. I, well, I, I just want to address something. And you're, you know, you're the knower of all things Chikara. Um, <laughs> I, I read a little bit of, I didn't get through the entire thing, uh, but of course, we were, I think we were talking about before, uh, the Uproxx or With Leather article talking about Chikara. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Written and, by the great and talented Daniel Matheson. Yeah, it, it was a fantastic article. Um, 
but it was talking about kind of like the tent poles of Chikara, and, and it went into wrestling is fun and all the wrestling is stuff, and, and it likened it to like an NXT developmental system. Is, is that accurate? Very much so. Um, you're seeing now, especially with the last couple shows for the new Chikara, in a sense, mm -hmm. uh, you're seeing a lot of people that uh, have wrestling for have wrestled for wrestling is sort of, I guess, getting the in the sense getting the call up, you could say, huh. as if. Uh, as if an NXT guy were the Raw. So you're seeing guys like Jervis Cottonbelly wrestle in Jakar more. Uh, the Estonian uh, Thunderfrog and all of uh, his crew are now working there. Um, you have a, a certain guy that looks very similar to uh, to an IWC wrestler, Dalton Castle, uh, one Ashley Remington. You know, I, uh, I, 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 I cornered Dalton at the IWC show. And I'm like, yeah, there's supposed to be this guy at Chikara. And I was like, and he knew nothing about it. He's like, yeah, I heard about it and knew nothing about it. I'm sure it's it. simply a coincidence. Nothing about it. Uh, so I thought it was a very, one, as typical with Dalton Castle, is a very weird conversation, uh, but even more so by this uh, confusion with Shikara. Definitely, yes. And, and I think it's cool because a lot of people are getting opportunities now uh, which is really awesome we saw i will say this past weekend in chicago i want to po uh, point out uh someone from the texas area uh who has worked uh, extensively for inspire pro got a huge opportunity uh jojo bravo mm -hmm. got to wrestle for chikara uh against max smash master he didn't do too well uh he got kind of best crushed. name i saw that on here the max smash master is the yes. best name ever in anywhere like i can see that popping up in some crappy little indie as a name is this guy a guy that's in a t-shirt and jeans most likely metallica or cradle of filth but in this it's this guy in the lower corner <laughs> <laughs> i and of course you know i his, love his, it his duo his his group of the the, the devastation corporation also blasted mcmassive and flex rumble crunch <laughs> Uh, which is uh, oh, uh, it's the best a ever variety of, of amazing talents, but yeah, Jojo Bravo got a bit crushed. Uh, amazing, on that show. but it was cool. amazing. It was so cool creative character, character name generation too. Holy crap! <laughs> yes, um, it was so cool to hear about Jojo debuting for Chikara because that I can say from working with that guy, he deserves it more than anybody. He works so hard, and I'm so happy for him to get that opportunity. But like I said, like a lot of people are moving up and doing uh, different things now, and, and um, it's really cool to see. Uh, and it's cool that the wrestling is companies are still around, um, to some of them, uh, to sort of test out maybe some gimmicks or, or some characters coming up. Because, you know, there's – there's and especially right now in Chikara, there's tons of people. Uh, there's tons of uh, characters and storyline-based uh, characters and changes to characters that sometimes it's a little difficult to follow, but uh, I encourage anyone to uh, to go look it up and, and, and study it a bit and see, because uh, there's some really cool stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Go check out that article on With Leather. How can they how can they find that easily? You can go to withleather.uprox.com uh, to go find it. I believe if, I should be around the front yeah, page. Yeah, uh, it should be fairly too recent. far. But. And if you hey, if you want to want to read that, you can read something from another friend of the Indie Mayhem Show, Brandon Stroud. He writes the best and worst of Raw in terms of other wrestling stuff. So, awesome. So yeah, indie wrestling. Uh, and it's indie cool. wrestling. I don't think I have anything from my area there, Eamon. Um, I don't know. Did, 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 did I sent you something? Did, ha, did have you, you been receiving those? Is, I have been receiving them. You have been uh, receiving those. Okay. For those that don't know, we get like a, a basically a, a newsletter of sorts to where uh, it lists a good majority of the indie wrestling events that go on all across the United States. Put the, even, I think even beyond that. Um, put together by a guy named Nate Stein. I know I've gotten other press releases from this guy. Um, I can't remember the origination of this. I believe Tracy Smothers, whatever he's involved with, might have been the subject of some of them. But there is like a, a, a weekly or at least bi-weekly maybe uh, newsletter he puts together and it's simply a list of all these feds and I have mm -hmm. not had the chance to do a deep dive and just like discover something utterly random at this thing yet uh, but no. I kind of want to oh yeah definitely because there's so much oh yeah and I think it's I mean we, we reiterate it constantly but this is a testament to like there's indie wrestling everywhere I there's was... 
I was using it because I was, I was using it to be like, uh, like I, because I kind of got screwed up last week because I was supposed to go to New York and I was going to try to go to one of the Pittsburgh shows this weekend, um, but uh, and now I'm finally I'm, I'm going to uh, Western New York, so I found myself going through the list saying, okay, is there anything near? <laughs> where I'm gonna be <laughs> like look up is anything in New York well, I have, I've never heard where's Deer Park New York you know um, I wonder, just wondering if I can I can offshoot there uh, while I'm in the area because originally originally I had a plan to maybe go check out something on the way back next last Sunday and then go something here in Pittsburgh and it just didn't work out so I, I'm there really needs to be an app. I'm, I'm there really, needs to be an app of some sort there it does <laughs> Well, you would, just uh, some sort of like tracking on. device. You know, you, you know how typical indies are to get the tracking device. There you go. Get. <laughs> well, gonna, I mean, we need like, to catch and release all the indie promoters across the nation, so we can, <laughs> <laughs> so we can tag them and follow them and their booking plans. Um, that'll be fun. That, wow. that'll be a fun project for someone else to work on, not me, because I'm not putting the work in. Maybe we can that. Indiegogo this thing. Possibly, that could be fun. That could be really cool. That could be really cool because I think I've seen so many people, you know, you know, who have been wrestling fans that are like, I didn't even know any wrestling was happening in my area. Like, it's it's something that's you know, like I said, it's everywhere. So much uh, and, uh, and so much of a chance thing. I mean, holy crap! I was up there for my anniversary. And I was like, hey, you know, there's a wrestling show tonight. We ran into a friend, and you know, that, that happened mm-hmm. to live up in the area, and it's like. Uh, we yeah we should go. <laughs> yeah, wrestling's community. That's, it was great, that's what and, it's I, all about. and I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so glad we did. It was it was great. Pro Wrestling Rampage up there in Erie, and they're doing so much. And uh, now they're on my radar. You know, uh, it's so great. It's so great. That's why I like doing DVIs because it's like there's all this Ohio stuff I'm unaware of. You know, mm-hmm. um, I you got to hit up. I was going nuts because uh, you know last last week they were in Columbus and Cleveland, and I'm like I like the one guy in the Adam Rose, I'm like, I think I know that guy. I think I've worked with that guy, right? And I, I, I emailed uh, the one guy for the DVI. I'm like, is this so and so? Because this has been driving me nuts for a week. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's him. So, you know, and, and that's always a cool thing. And you develop those that. connections and you develop, you know, sort of like, hey, recognize that guy. Yeah. And, and you get excited when you see those. I mean, people joke about me, like, spotting, like, the, you know, indie wrestlers and the, in the extra stuff. How many times have I tweeted fun. you? When you weren't in the hangout and, I, and they're in Texas or something, I'm like, who are these guys? You know. Yes. Yeah. It's always fun to see. Uh, for example, uh, I, when you know Ricky Starks got put through a catering table by Ryback, all of Texas lost their shit because you know you, you've seen this guy and you follow this guy and you see him, you know how talented he is and and to that opportunity, like that's crazy. And but it's based off of a connection you develop of going to these shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why you know that's why I love indie wrestling. You that's why speak. that's why that's why we talk about it. Exactly. That's why we, we spun off a day. show just because. I don't even know if anybody watches this show. We don't look at the numbers. We just we just show up every I, Tuesday. I'm sure somebody's watching. I'm sure Someone, somebody's least, watching. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure the right, per, the right person is watching. The right so. person is watching, and that's you. Um, yes. I am speaking of app. Uh, maybe we should talk to the Chikara, Chikara people to start this up because I mean they're big on like apps. Um, they they have mm-hmm. a a Shakara which way is what they're promoting right now for ninety nine cents <laughs> and they've had like like puzzle games before I remember they had a coloring app with like little chibi versions of all their guys I had to babysit some neighbors kids and I was like how I ended up bringing my iPad and my phone and I handed each of them this game and it occupied them for at least twenty minutes amazing Shakara you helped my weird offshoot babysitting duties that i had that one time thank you chikara <laughs> um I, I do want to um i uh, speaking of chikara because i literally just remembered this i wish i would have talked about this last weekend uh, but i still believe uh you can be able to participate in this because it was around the time uh last weekend chikara had some shows in chicago and uh while that they did a a uh, event at the squared circle which is the restaurant that uh tara victoria Lisa Marie uh, owns, and uh, they did a uh, basically a, a night dedicated to uh, the memory of Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney, oh, nice. uh, who who was the anniversary of him passed away, where they raised money for the Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney night. Uh, it was a suicide prevention fundraiser. Uh, I believe that you can still donate to that. Uh, I believe if you I don't I believe if you look up the squared circle dot biz, or if you just Google uh, Larry Sweeney uh, fund. 
um, you can definitely find that and go uh, donate to that. I know they had a big night where they raised a lot of money. Uh, uh, had a lot, definitely a Chikari influence because I mean, you know, a lot of the guys mm-hmm. that grew with Sweeney and stuff like that. And he's a and he's and another guy. Def- and he's another guy. You know, Super Indie was dedicated to him a few years ago, um, and uh, he's somebody we had on on uh, our podcast uh, ages ago, and and i uh, talked to in person here at the shows, and he was always a super guy uh, from the area. From, he's uh, he's over. He, I think he's from over in Monroeville. Um, so it was really sad to see what happened there. But it's good to see so much good is happening out of that, at least. Uh, so. Definitely. So, Dev, I, I wish I would have had the link or something prepared, but I know if you can find it, you can, I believe, still donate to the fund. So. Mm-hmm. Well, Eamon, I think that's the show. Thanks a lot. Thanks to our that friend Facade, at one Facade on the Twitters. I think you can link off everything from there. Uh, look him up. He's all over the place. He's all. He's got this. He's got this. That this internet thing down. Um, and of course, thanks to Basic Sickness, BasicSickness.com for our uh, outro theme. You're going to have to check out here, uh, as well as uh, hit us up at WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the shows we do. And of course, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google Plus, and at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Um, you also can check out. Uh, 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 us on itunes youtube yes <laughs> yes that's the thing stitcher spreaker all that kind of stuff please like us friend us uh share it with your friends comment get involved let's know indies you're into until then for Eamon, for me support some indie wrestling huh? never said i was a gangster or thug but i'm an animal for the oh. taste of the four yeah. six 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 you know how i act now if you got a problem come and see if i'm a back down